All right, now that we have saved our vector files as both SVGs and .vectrs, now we're ready to close vector.com and open up PhotoP. Remember, PhotoP is a raster program, but we need this in order to make images that can go online and that can be printed by photo printers. You can print vectors only from limited types of printers, like laser jets can print them, ones that, that work almost more like fax machines and certain architectural plotters and things, but otherwise you have to use the advantages of the vectors to make a really good raster image. So we do that by opening PhotoP and creating a new project. And we create that project with the pixel dimensions we want. So we change it from pixels to inches and we make it, this will be for all of our pieces, uh, 8 by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch. And the reason we start with our vectors is because we know that they can be made to fit any size. So I'm going to start by bringing in my, it will only work with your SVG files, just dragging and dropping my SVG in. And then I'm going to drag and drop my color SVG in. <laughs> And that's a good thing to know. So when you do gradients as color fills within vector.com, that doesn't always translate the way PhotoP sees it. So it caught the gradient, but it didn't get the color. So this is another reason why it can be good to do your coloring within the, the raster program. I'll show you what I mean. But anyway, so how can we fix that? Let's say I want the, the blue bird and the green crown. I'll show you. Because it all looks good out of vector, but if I can't get it into PhotoP, that means I'm not going to be able to rasterize it in the same way. I could rasterize it out of vector.com. And this is me learning the limitations of this freeware in real time because the gradient thing is fairly new within it. So I'm going to go back to vector.com. And instead, I'm going to output it like how vectors are basically meant to be used, which is just solid colors that are cut out, right? So I open this up. And instead of having well, this was an older version. So I'm going to go and I'm going to say open file. And I'm going to find it. And I'm going to find that. Oh, I have it in downloads, don't I? So I'm going to do the full color one that's in downloads as the vector.com. Do do do. And now I'm going to turn off those gradients and just use solid colors. And the only thing I care about is that it's going to be different for the crown than it is for the bird. And all of this is to kind of show how it's easier to color within PhotoP rather than in a vector program. So let's take this black one, for instance. All I need to do to color it is duplicate it and then just add layer styles to it. Because just like I was able to do in vector.com, I can do it in the layer styles of PhotoP. And it won't ever change it from being a smart object. I can layer up gradations, all the things I've been showing in the past videos. Playing with different opacities, different types of gradients. I'll keep it simple this time. Different angles of gradients. Play with how expanded they are, how narrow they are, how opaque they are, blacks coming through. But then I have this other vector EPS, which is just the drop shadow, which I could play with as well. 
and I can layer these things any way I like. But the only way I can get a separate vector color for that crown is to go to the vector program and open it up and it's having trouble opening it. See, there we go. So there's that crown I made. If I go to my layers and I find that path, let's turn everything else off. So it's this one. I turn everything off. I'm going to set that to just be a fill and I'm going to take off the shadow. Just turn it off. And then I can export this separately. So the, the easiest way, and this is why I try to teach it this way in an intro class, to think about vectors is just cutouts of colored paper. But you can do multiple colors. I'm going to download it as both types, and then I'm going to label them, and I'm just going to call them crown. Because though that shadow thing is cool, it doesn't translate into other programs. And I didn't know that until I tried that. So I have a crown SVG and a crown vector. Now this is bright green. Now I go back to Photopea and then I can bring that SVG in. Voila. And it's its own element that I can color the way I want. Does it even have a stroke on it? I'm not sure. Okay, now the important thing, we also notice this. When you bring the SVGs in, this is why I like EPS is a little bit better. It changes, it, for a reason I don't understand, it changes the image size. So you want to go back to image size and you want to change it to 8 by 10 again at 350. And because they're smart objects that we brought in, they'll all be sized up beautifully. And then you have kind of your clean image. And maybe I can add that drop shadow to the crown here. And do all the things I was doing within vector.com. So it's just how translatable these things are. I can go ahead and add a drop shadow here. With those same features, so it, it kind of brings it all together. I can add a texture. I can do so many things. I can customize the texture. Make it more subtle. A little waffle pattern with a slight depth. So you can just, you know, go crazy. But how do we make it now print ready? Well, as long as it's 8 by 10 at 350, this is now able to output what we need. So first, I need to turn off my background and export it as a PNG. So this is my color logo to turn in. And now with that black crown, if I wanted to submit this one as black, I could do that. I can just make a duplicate of the black crown, even though it's green, turn off the drop shadow on the duplicate and put a color overlay of solid black. So where a color vector can then be simplified into a basic vector, like that. And then I can save that by exporting it as a PNG with a different name. These are all going to downloads. These are what I can move to my desktop and put into Canvas, along with my refined sketch to turn them in. But I'm not done, because not only do I want to get credit for this in Canvas, 
I also want to make these print ready. And you might as well make them both print ready, but then you're cho going to choose which one you actually print for your midterm portfolio. So for my black one, I'm going to turn on the white background. I'm going to make sure my image size is 8 by 10 by 350. It is. And then I'm going to say file, or rather layer, flatten image. Because you don't want to print anything with extra data that's not needed. It can slow down the printing. So we flatten our print images. And we don't save them over something else. Instead, we save them as a new file format, which is a TIFF. So you're going to go to save, rather export as, and you're going to go down to more, and you're going to find TIFF. And I'm going to do that and then name it. And this time when I name it, this is the first time we're using a TIFF file. It can be TIF or TIFF. And I'm going to name it with the initials capital P and R at the front. That stands for print ready. And then I'm going to do my usual thing. Black logo. OK, good. It's a TIFF. It's print ready. And now I'm going to turn on my color version. So to do that, I got to go backwards in my history before I flattened it because this is still the PSD file. I don't want to overwrite that. And I turn on my different colors, even though I think these colors are hideous. You know, these are all the things I could save. So now to make this print ready, I say file, export as, more, TIFF. And I'm going to change that name to color logo with PR at the beginning. And these I mark as purple for my own organization. My TIFFs. These are my print-ready TIFF files. If you double-click them, they open up in preview. TIFF is kind of a transportable raster format that doesn't ever lose quality. It uses something called LZW compression, which is a lossless compression format. So you can see all that kind of waffle texture. It's perfectly clean because it's outputted from a vector. And that's what we want to print with. So now how do we print it? Well, we go to the class, the home page, and you go to links. And under links, you will find a link for our class Dropbox. And our class Dropbox looks like this. I want to get back to the basic files. You're going to see a folder that says flatten TIFF files to print. You're going to click on that. And then you're going to find your name. You're going to be under SP232. And then that is your folder. So I have a, my name for this semester. You open your folder up, and then you drag and drop your TIFF files into it. So mine are still in downloads. So I'm going to select both of those, drag and drop them in. They are flattened. They're 8 by 10 at 350 pixels per inch, and they are TIFFs. And in case you need reminders of that, if you go to the flattened TIFF files to print, at the very bottom you'll see a PDF that gives you instructions for how to make something print ready and save it into the Dropbox. And that's why the folder is called flattened TIFF files to print, because <laughs> it reminds you to save them as TIFF and to flatten them. And you'll find it under Digital Art Class Files. It's the first folder in the class, in the Dropbox. All right. Now, what other assignments do I want to put into that folder? Do I want to make print ready? So let me open my folder back up. I'm going to pick one of these to print. So I have to choose right now. Which one do I want? I don't like the color one very much. So I'm just going to take that and delete it out of Dropbox. That doesn't delete the file from my computer. It just takes it out of Dropbox. Because right. I only want you to have the ones you want printed in here. Because then I'll be printing them. 